Okay, we're back. This is attorney Vince Davis with Cynthia Becker, and this is The Secret, How to Fight Child Protective Services and When. Cynthia, ready for another call? I am. Okay, let's talk to Lily from California. Lily, did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? Okay, go ahead. What's your question? So, um, long story short, uh, CPS took away my two boys after um, there was an accident when I was at work. And my oldest son got eventually, um, the the judge ordered for full custody to his dad. And the youngest one, a month later, full custody back to me, of course. And then now um, I'm going to court to get my oldest son back because he's, totally unhappy and depressed and and failing fifth grade and and he wants to come back home and you know so I wrote this long report I'm going to court uh, at the end of the month and I'm just wondering if there's any circumstances um, regarding court that I should be aware of or if for some crazy reason I don't after reading my report I I don't get granted full custody back um, which I've had his whole life then do I appeal right away or are there any circumstances regarding that that I should know of Okay, that's a good question, but it depends on what stage of the case you're in. You know, is this well, the disposition? Well, it's family court, not dependency. Oh, it's family court. No, yeah, because the the the, the exit order is from the dependency case, mm-hmm. where that my son goes to his father for full custody. Okay, his how, father pulled in, how long yeah. has it been since the dependency case closed? Um, so my my youngest son, um, they closed his case in October, and I have full custody of him now. I did, as I did before, and then my oldest was in uh, the end of August. Okay. So, you know, when you go to family court and you want to change a juvenile dependency court order regarding custody and visitation, you have to have, I forget the term, I think it's substantial or significant yes. change in circumstances, right? Yes, they did. And I do because he's now failing fifth grade, okay. as well as there's been tons of violations on well, the exit order. Are you able to tie the the failing in the fifth grade to, you know, being placed with his uh, dad? Uh, yeah, I am, because I, I have the records from his previous years at school. He's never, he's never failed.
Obviously, it's not. I mean, it's just. Uh, so you don't think that my case is strong because my son is now failing fifth no. grade and no. because he's his mental health he's not getting any counseling for as well as um, his father has violated multiple rules on the exit orders and still continues to like he's supposed to give me this weekend and event. Right. So I didn't say that your case is not strong. I just want you to watch out because some of the things that you think might be admissible evidence, they, they technically aren't. Like an email from a teacher, that's hearsay. Now, the judge may consider it, you know, because you guys are there not represented by an attorney. But if he, if I was representing the dad and I saw that, I'd, I'd say objection hearsay. Judge, you can't consider that. Well, look, an email is the only reason I have an email communication was to show to shed light on the fact that his father is completely like always constantly lying to me because mm-hmm. his father has educational rights and I only get records at this, at this time. And so I got the record of him failing class as well as his progress report as well as logged on and see 150 missing math assignments, you know, no zero percent in other certain courses. And so the email from her was just to solidify the fact that his father is lying to me about all, you know, all things that I can't have a, a, any kind of communication that's consistent with him or valid because there's another email from him saying, you know, I spoke to his teacher, uh, we had coffee, and she's never said, she's never, you know, she said she didn't know who you were, and she said she's never spoken to you. And I was like, really, that's interesting, because I okay. just talked to her on the phone with her a few prior days before that. Well, you know, based on what you told me, I think you probably have a very strong case. Just don't be yeah. too lax, <laughs> so. you know. Make huh? sure you don't be lax. Uh, don't take things for granted. Dot your I's, cross your T's. I'm trying to. Um, it's just hard because there's so much information, you know, that I don't know the answers to. Like, you know, do I appeal right away if for some reason this judge is not see does not see the light you know or how can i get how can i get my son to testify you know because he doesn't want to be with at his dad's he's miserable you know the, depending on what county you're in sometimes they allow children to testify but a lot of counties don't allow children to testify in family he's law cases is. you know in cps yeah. cases they they are allowed to testify but you know a lot of judges on family law cases look down on that so you might want to check um, is he in therapy of any kind? And no, I apologize no, if he you was guys be. Asked. That was he that was, was in what? Was, he was supposed to be. That was um, like one of the stipulations in the depend in the dependency case was that he continue to have mental health counseling because he's had it all his life. You know, I've, I've had him in counseling, right. and he needs pro- to process his emotions, especially after tra- the traumatic event. You know, and so his dad does not have him in counseling as of you know two weeks after the case was dismissed. Now that that is, is there any? That's what my son has said. But is there any kind I... of, of abuse that's going on with the father um, between him so and your really, son? He's really, I have a nine minute recording of my son, you know, breaking down and crying. And this is what I called in last time for um, breaking down, crying, telling me that his dad has hit him and slapped him and, um, you know, screams all the time. And, and I know his dad is, is really, you know, he's, his criminal record can clearly show that he has um, anger issues and, you know, he has no temper control, stuff like that. So, hey, hey, Lily, I just want to tell you one thing because we're about to go to another break. If you're going to okay. use a tape, have it transcribed, okay? Go to rev.com and show up with the tape and the transcription. Call us back rev, in a few rev. weeks. Com? Let us, yeah, rev.com. Call us back in a few weeks and uh, tell us what happened. Uh, we have to go move into another break right now. We'll be back with more questions, more stories. And this is the secret how to fight child protective services and when. Thank you.